It's the Mountain Country Veteran Spotlight of the Week. Brought to you by Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group. Guy Gurton here. Join us each week as we visit with our local veterans all over Southern Colorado who share their stories of hope and courage. Good morning. Welcome to Mountain Country in the Facebook page. Sure glad to have you along here with us again this morning. I'm Guy Gurton here at Mountain Country. And it is the Mountain Country Veteran Spotlight, sponsored by Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group. And this week we have Kenny Bauer, another amazing veteran. Kenny, thank you for being here. Thank you for the opportunity, Guy. We appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. And we have a lot to talk about this morning, <laughs> <laughs> don't we? I don't know. We're chewing the fat here, and I'm finding all things, amazing things about you. Let's start with the Army. Uh, 12 years, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I spent 12 years, had a failed baseball career, joined, needed something to uh, fall back onto to erase the disappointment from my family's eyes, so I joined the Army. Failed baseball, did you try it? Oh, yeah. For the big I, leagues? I, I, I tried it all the way up to the minor leagues, and just... It's tough, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it's really tough. Tough to get in there. Well, good, at least you gave it a shot. <laughs> but you were a, a combat engineer in the Army, so... What exactly did you do? Um, throughout, uh, throughout the 12 years I was in, combat engineer took on many different roles uh, because at the time we were heavy in the global war on terrorism. And um, originally we were, we were there for demining and, and mine clearing operations and minefield fortifications and, and that kind of stuff. But at the beginning of the wars, we started to take on an infantry role, started to do room clearing, and then as it progressed into the IED threat, um, combat engineers took the role of route clearance, um, where we drove down the route ahead of convoys and, and other security efforts and either tried to get blown up <laughs> wow. or find them before they blew up. Uh, Dangerous work. I mean, did you enjoy it? Or was it? it was different. It was, oh, yeah. it was exciting. In, in a way, it was exciting. Um, cause you knew that you were in some of the most high tech state of the art, uh, armored equipment and right. you knew that the enemy had ways to defeat that, but was it your time? It was, it was, it was playing Russian roulette, but with IEDs kind of. Right. And then, I mean, uh, we went back into the infantry operations and, and breaching operations and, you know, some, some combat engineers got to go in and become part of special operations and, uh, provide expertise with that kind of stuff so right now you said you had uh, three tours to iraq and uh you were wounded right yes sir. and then uh, three purple hearts congratulations <laughs> and thank i don't you. know if that's congratulations <laughs> is that a congratulations <laughs> that's that's a enemy marksmanship badge so i don't know if that's, that's incredible <laughs> can uh, you talk about that at all what what yeah, happened uh, one of them the very first one which became a running joke during the first tour uh, was from a mortar attack, and I took shrapnel to the face and the arm. Um, but I was returned to duty. Um, that was in August of 2004. Uh, October of 2004 was the, the one that really changed my life, changed my perspective on life, and really impacted me in a different way. That's the one that uh, two survived uh, the blast. Um, I was one of the fortunate, and I was one of the fortunate to have the lesser of the injuries. Um, my injuries left me paralyzed. I'm missing part of my left calf. Uh, I've had to have multiple skin grafts and shrapnel debridements um, and shrapnel removals. And I actually just recently went through a surgery where some of O4's remnants, you know, was taken care of. Um, it just, and I, I was paralyzed for six months, had to relearn how to walk, how, had to do things, but uh, knew that once I got fully capable again, I was, I wanted to get back into the fight mm -hmm. and, uh, received a, a third purple heart for a concussion later on. Mm -hmm. Well, when someone says, thank you for your service, is that, uh, is that enough or how can someone thank you enough? I, I, <laughs> I don't know if thanks, thanks is really the, the thing though. Cause I chose that. Right. That's what I chose to do. And I was doing what I felt was right at the time. You know, it gave me purpose. I wanted to serve this country and 
everything was bigger than me and larger than me, and it always will be. I'm a short guy, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, coming in today, you wouldn't know it. I mean, you know, you wouldn't know that you had suffered uh, any injuries like that, just to look at you. <laughs> I, I've tried to come back and, and come back in a big way, so that way I could keep serving. Sure, sure. Well, thank you. And I know, and two times in Afghanistan also, and one time Horn of Africa. So you've been all around the world. Yes, sir. Pretty nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tried to do my part. Yeah. And I know we won't go down that road of Afghanistan, but that's kind of crazy too, isn't it? Everything it, going it is. On. It is. It's uh, When you get over there, you, you grow a respect for, for that, that culture. You grow a respect for that mindset, and, and you know it's different than anything in the world. And no matter what, yeah. I mean, we can, we can try to do our part, but it, in the end, they, they follow different rules. So. Right. Absolutely. But, well, moving on to what you're doing now, and it just continues because now you're a firefighter. Correct. So thanks for that. Okay. And uh, what, five and a half years of federal firefighter. So explain to us a little bit about how that's going and what exactly is that? It's, it's actually going pretty amazing. Um, uh, federal fire versus municipality it just means I'm part of the, the government still. Um, I'm just on a GS scale. Uh, but we do the exact same thing that any municipality does. Um, structural firefighting, we're unique in Fort Carson where we also have a wildland program. We have our airport uh, fire rescue program. We also have our technical rescue programs, um, our hazmat. So we have everything that a city would have just at a smaller scale. Um, so and we are, just, are you heading out to the big fires, the forest fires, and helping with those? Uh, we've we've gone a couple times. I personally haven't. Um, I haven't gone with this department. Uh, I've done other things though with it. Uh, but yeah, so there's always plenty of work, isn't there? Oh yeah, there is. <laughs> with with the, as dry as it's been and everything, and the um, what the urban search and rescue, you went to down to Louisiana. Yeah, so uh, Col uh, Fort Carson Fire is part of Colorado Task Force One's Urban Search and Rescue Program. We're one of 23 different participating agencies, and uh, a few of us are on the task force, and we have our special specialties within the task force. And throughout the year, we get on these deployment cycles, and during hurricane season usually is when it picks up. Um, and... The governments, the local governments will request help and aid, and usually that's where FEMA comes into play. And we went ahead and deployed in part of uh, the urban search and rescue for Hurricane Ida mm -hmm. down in Louisiana. We got to operate down in Grand Isle and uh, down in New Orleans and Homa. Sure. So, any, any stories you can share about what you saw? I grew a greater respect for Mother Nature <laughs> and its ability. Right. Uh, and what its wrath is. Um, I also grew a greater respect for the Southern culture and how resilient they are. Um, being down there, you know, assessing the damage and then also helping them however we could and seeing their spirits still be very uplifted and, and positive really, really was a greater, it, it just was eye opening that. Uh, these, these they people, go through a lot down there, don't they? Oh, they go through a ton, and, and to see them bounce right back and, and look at you and be like, we're going to be okay. Yeah. And I just was like, wow, you know, that's your house is leveled, and it's yeah. amazing to hear that you, you have that spirit still. And it's like batting down the hatch because two more years, here comes maybe another one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think if I remember right, they've hit a hurricane. I mean, last year they even got a hurricane damage. Not that exact area, but they – they, mm -hmm. they received another big hurricane, and I think it's just going to keep picking up sure. with the way. Well, I know they appreciate your effort, I'm sure, uh, for, with all the help down there. And I know congratulations is in order, right, because the firefighter of the year. <laughs> oh, tell us about that. It's a, a, nice to have. It's, <laughs> it's nice to be recognized by my peers in, in the department and, you know, to, to know that my, the work and the hard work and, and the work behind the scenes doesn't go unnoticed. I guess you could say, um, but it's just good to be doing my part to make the department better because, I mean, there's a saying out there that says, leave it better than what, what you came in, and that's what I'm trying to do is, is create my legacy. 
And that's voted on by your peers? Yes, sir. Oh, that's always the best, isn't it? Yes. That's, that's always the best. A uh, couple other items. The um, Operation Underground Railroad. Uh, you're involved with that? Yes, sir. I, I volunteer my efforts there. With uh, I'll, I'll promote some of their events that go on. I'll try and get to them if they're locally or, or whatever it can be. I also uh, help provide some education, uh, some educational efforts, and then uh, – would love to be more on the operation side of things when they go into the operating uh, realm if they're in our region. But right now, my life doesn't allow that. So I provide some surveillance and some reconnaissance efforts. And for those who may not know, what is Operation Underground Railroad? Operation Underground Railroad is an organization uh, created to combat human trafficking and also to... Uh, they, they will, when they get actionable intelligence they will go and take action and recover children right and uh they've recovered over a thousand children wow and gotten them back wonderful um what an effort throughout the world too they go yeah. throughout the world not just in our country but throughout the world right well thank you for all you do and all you've done and as i ask a lot of the others if you could say i mean we could go on for an hour with you on some of these <laughs> stories and amazing stuff what did wearing the uniform mean to you after all of this wearing the uniform was was a very prideful thing and it still is because i i do it in a different aspect of than just my country um wearing the uniform gives me a purpose it gives it's a greater sense of self uh i have these these uh core values that i operate with or these uh it's a code i always tell my wife it's for for me, it's mission crew, uh, then self. And myself is always put last. Uh, putting on the uniform really emphasizes that to me. And knowing that I'm, I'm supporting an organization that is trying to do a greater good for those that are serving our country too now, is, it, it's incredible. It's, there, I, there's no words I can put to putting on a uniform and one serving the country and then also serving the community too so right we'll close with the um for your fellow vets who may be struggling out there maybe listening or watching this what would you say to them or how can you help them especially you no know, transitioning back to civilian it's scary it, it really is it's hard i always said have a plan but i got out with having a plan without having a plan um have a plan um, find your purpose. And when you find your purpose, when you find what drives you, go all in with it. Um, also, don't hesitate to use the resources that are out there because there's a numerous amounts, an infinite amount. And if you don't know what resources are, reach out to somebody because eventually you'll find somebody that can guide you in the right direction. You're never alone. Always know that. Never alone. Um, it's scary because you will think you're alone, especially some of us that, that are away from family and getting out of the military and staying put away from family, you'll feel alone, but you're not. Right. Can someone reach out to you if they want to get a hold of you or if they can reach us here at the station? Absolutely. Yeah. They can always reach out to me. I'm, my, my ears are all, and my time is always there for, for vets. I've had vets reach out to me on social media, vets I never served with, and, and I've tried to help out however I can, and, and I've fortunately been able to do my part to get them help sure um yes absolutely reach out to the radio station uh they can search me on social media i don't shy away from helping people right thank you kenny bauer we appreciate your time thank you very much guy ha happy holidays and a great new year to you 2022 it's gonna be a good year <laughs> you as well Oh, who, what was the baseball organization you were with? I was with the Minnesota Twins. Nice. You <laughs> gave it a shot. It's good to hear. Gave it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kenny, and thank you for being with us here on the Facebook page and at Mountain Country. We'll see you next week.